Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, just to kind of change things up. Typically on my channel I cover makeup, tutorials, makeup palettes, questions that I get sent, and you know, my different platforms that you know I reach out to you guys at. And I wanted to go ahead and do something for my pixie girls out there. So, I've had a pixie for, it's been two years now. And before that, like I would go through spurts, so like I would have a pixie and I'd grow it out and then I'd cut it off again and then I'd grow it out. So, through that time, I've had a really hard time finding styling videos for pixies, like that take you through different ways to style your hair when you have a pixie cut because when you don't have a lot of hair to work with there's not a lot of different things that you can do so that's what I wanted to talk about today so I have some products set up I have my mini straightener plugged in I got this years and years and years ago my aunt and uncle got it for me for my birthday and I held on to it and honestly it's amazing like it is like the size of a travel size straightener I know dry bar makes one Eva NYC makes one like they they are out there bedhead makes one I think um, this one I don't know what brand it's I can't even say it Ionica Ionica not really sure which one but I've had this for years and years and years and I have been using it so much since I got a pixie cut two years ago so, I wanted to kind of take you through different ideas, different products that you can use for the looks that you're trying to go for, um, and kind of take you through like a daily hair routine for me. This is what works for me. It's not going to work for everybody, but this is what I do. So typically, when it's time to wash my hair, it's typically every like three or four days. Um, I use a sulfate-free shampoo and um, conditioner. And I really like the brand Not Your Mother's. They have some really good sulfate-free shampoos and conditioners. And Love Beauty and Planet has some good ones. Um, you can pretty much guarantee that if you get a color-safe shampoo and conditioner, it's good, it's going to be free of sulfates and parabens. And it's basically, it doesn't have as much alcohol in it, so it doesn't dry your hair out as much. It's more conditioning for your hair. It leaves your hair with more moisture. It helps your color last longer, so you won't have to, you won't have to go get toners as frequently. You, now like if you're trying to cover up grays, it's not going to help that, I'm sorry. It's not going to keep the grays from coming in, but it is going to help with the longevity of how long your hair dye lasts. As far as like fade out and all of that stuff. So I wash my hair with the sulfate free shampoo and conditioner, and then when I get out of the shower, I typically let it air dry just because I don't see a reason to cause more damage than I'm already doing in dyeing it and straightening it. I just don't. But when I get out of the shower and I towel dry it, I use one of two products. I use a leave-in conditioning treatment. So this one I got at Sally's. It's called Daily Dose. It smells kind of funny, but it works really, really well. There was also one by Eva NYC that was a leave-in 10 in 1 treatment and I love that. It worked really really well and it was like 4 bucks. It was worth it. This one I think I got for like 3 bucks and I've been pleased with it other than the smell which the smell goes away. And then I also for a little while I was using this one. I also got this one at Sally's. Um, I've had it for years. I don't even know how old it is honestly. I should probably look and see if it's expired and needs thrown away. Um, but this full big bottle back then cost $8. I don't know what it would cost today, but pretty much any leave-in conditioning treatment will do well. I, like I said, I really like the Eva NYC one. It worked amazing and it smelled so good. So good. Um, but I know like Not Your Mother's has one. Matrix has one. Dry Bar has one. Like pretty much every company has one so I would highly recommend investing in it even if you have long hair invest in it it's worth it so after that 
what I will do is I will let it air dry. That typically doesn't take too long because my hair is super short. If you want to blow dry it, what you're going to want to do with a pixie cut, you want to blow dry your hair the direction that you want it to go. So if you like wearing your pixie more feathered back, you're going to want to blow dry it away from your face and feathered back. If you like, like me, wearing your pixie where it's all kind of coming forward and it looks really cruddy right now because I haven't styled it because I knew I was doing this video. Um, what if you want the top to come forward, the sides to sit down, you're going to blow dry the sides down on each side, same with the back. And then from like the back where you, almost where your head starts to curve, you're going to slick the hair forward and blow dry it all forward. It's going to give you more volume. It's going to change up your look a little bit. If that's not what you're used to doing, it'll give you a little bit of something to change it up with. It'll look a little bit edgier, um, a little bit more modern, if that makes sense. Um, and typically I have it, it just naturally kind of parts. You can't really see it on this side, but it typically parts here. And this whole top section is like what I typically forward. like to do is I, I already have my straightener plugged in. It's good to go. It's heated up. What I like to do is I like to work on my sides and back first and then go to the top last. So typically what I'll do is I'll bring all of my hair on the top forward or I'll pin it back and I have no shortage of clips because I'm a cosmetologist. It's like currency. So I pin this so that it's out of the way and I have access to my sides and then I take my straightener and I like to keep my sides sleek. So I like to basically kind of curl them under a little bit just so that they're not sticking up all over the place. But you can, if your sides are a little bit longer and you want to curl them a little bit, you can curl them a little bit. Like, it'll work. When my sides were longer, that's what I would do. But I typically just go around the top half of my head and curl everything under, just so that I know that there's no little guys sticking up in the back. They're all kind of laying down. And when you're straightening it, same rule as when you're blow drying it, you want to straighten it in the direction that you want it to go. So like, I want these pieces to lay down, so I'm straightening them down. If I wanted them to be, you know, going back away from my face, I'm going to curl away from my face. So I pretty much just go around the longer pieces that are sitting on like the top part of my crown and I curl them under. And then if you ever have pieces that aren't listening like this one, just take your hand and kind of rough it a little bit. You're gonna press and you're gonna move your fingers back and forth. So press and then back and forth, very lightly. You don't need to be like rubbing yourself raw. But that's what I do for the sides and the back. And I kind of form it around my ears and get it to lay the way that I'm liking it to lay. So when it comes to the top, I saw Whippy Cake do this years ago before I even had a pixie and she basically taught me how to style my pixie um she helped a lot but she is not putting any videos out because she had some health issues and actually ended up passing from the health issues so we don't have her to grace us with those awesome tutorials anymore but what I like to do is I'll start working at the back and I like to pull it forward and curl it so I'll show you on the side here what I'm doing. I'm grabbing the base and I'm curling it in, in towards the middle of my head, if that makes sense. The perimeter here, we're going to pull in. So same on this side. We're going to pull it in. Pull it in. Pull it in. Now when we get to the middle part, this is where you get to have some fun. I like to curl it under and pull. It'll give you almost like a little C-shaped kind of curl. Almost like a beachy wave kind of feel. It's like a half curl. Enough to give you a little bit of volume and have a little bit of curl in the middle of the hair strand and then the ends are straight, which is what I like to do. 
and honestly when it comes to styling pixie hair it's it's a lot of trial and error try things they might work for you they might not if they don't work for you find something else find something else that works better and literally like i said before with pixie hair there's not a whole lot that you can do because you don't have a lot of hair to work with so it's all about finding those key styles that you like and want to wear every day so now that that's done typically what i like to do is i'll style my hair and then i'll go in and do my makeup because when you're heat styling hair however it cools is how it's gonna sit so you don't want to like immediately after um heat styling it like mess with it because you're gonna ruin the like hair memory if that makes sense so for example, say I have long hair and I want to give myself a curl. I like to curl with a straightener. So if I make a curl with a straightener and then I immediately go in and start playing with it, it's not going to be as curly and it's not going to hold for as long. So when you let your hair cool, however it cools is how it's going to sit. So let this cool, find something to do for a few minutes, and then we can go back to it and mess with it and put in our styling products. And there's a few that I have here to pick from. So... Unfortunately, I don't have any volumizing spray with me. I ran out of that a few days ago, but Big Sexy Hair has a really great volumizing powder. It's like, it sounds odd to explain it, but it's, it's just a little tube and it takes, it does not take a lot. It looks almost like baby powder when you like dab it out, but when you start to rustle it, it feels wet and kind of grainy. And then it dries, like it's wet and dry at the same time, if that makes sense. And it basically gives your hair what I call grit or hold. And it basically like helps hold your hair in place and give you volume. So unfortunately, I don't have any of that on me. But what I do have is typically I'll start out with one of three products. I'll start out with either a fiber wax, which this is one by OGX. And it has the clearance sticker on it still. I got this while I was working for Ulta on clearance, and I love it. It's amazing. It's honestly my favorite pomade that I have, but it's basically like it's made for texturizing your hair. So this is what the top looks like. I don't think they make it anymore, but it is the Bamboo Fiber Texture Flexible Fiber Wax. And you open it up, and I've used quite a bit of it, but it looks like this. It almost looks more like a cream. And it smells amazing. I'll either use this or one of my new favorites. This is from got to be I got this at Walmart for I think it was like four bucks. And it's it's a pretty big container and it's more of like a pomade, like a traditional men's pomade. Um, I like to use this. There's also one by Bedhead. I'm trying to remember what it's called. I think it's like it's something manic, but it's like a teal bottom with a tin lid on it, and it's very, very, very sticky. It's very sticky, but if you have dry hair and you need something, you, you like it to have more of a sticky feel to it, because sticky means it's going to have more moisture. Um, if you want more moisture in your pixie, you don't want it to be as like matte looking, use the sticky one. Another one that I have, this is called Joyride. It's a texturizing powder balm. And this is by Bedhead. This is what it looks like. I'm not sure that they make this anymore. While I was working at Ulta, I found like there was like six of these on the clearance rack at Ulta. And they were on sale for $3 each. And I got a discount on top of that. So I picked up every single one of them. And basically... You like screw the bottom and it comes out the top and it's almost like a jelly. Like I can't even explain. It almost feels like a silicone makeup primer, like foundation primer. And it smells like strawberries. It smells amazing. But this is also very oily. So if you use this on your hair, use it sparingly because it's going to make your hair look oily. You're only going to want to use it on the ends because it's gonna make your hair look oily if you put it on the roots. 
I typically don't reach for this one as much. Typically when I'm blonde, I reach for this one because at least with me, when I have blonde hair, my hair is drier and doesn't look as shiny because basically through the bleaching process, you have stripped all of the natural oils out of your hair. So you can get away with using a product more like this. But when I'm brunette, I can't do it. I cannot do it. I have to use more of like a fiber wax or a pomade. So for the sake of the video, I'm gonna use the Got To Be, because why not? This one also smells good. It doesn't smell bad, but it's not like, it's not like it's fruity or floral or like manly or anything. It's, it's got a pretty neutral smell to it. It doesn't stink, which is good. So what I do is I take about that much on my fingers and I rub it in between my fingers and a little bit on my palms. And then you're gonna wanna pat and move. So pat and move, just kind of set everything down. And this particular trick I learned from, what is her name? She's like a, a blogger, her name, I think it's like Sarah B. Um, I follow her on Instagram, she's adorable. Um, she's like, she's got a blonde pixie and she has like a bunch of tattoos and she's just, she's just the epitome of cuteness. She's adorable. But I actually learned this trick from her. So when you're working on the top, you need to rough everything up in order to manipulate it to where you want it to be. So you want to disperse your product and it's going to make it look messy. Messy is okay. We can fix it. You want to disperse your product and then move your hair how you want it to sit. So I typically like to make like a little swoop here in the front. I like my bangs to be more in my face. And then I like to be super voluminous throughout here. More so in the back. And I'm taking everything and pulling it towards my face. So I'm, I'm pulling it towards the front. And honestly, with a pixie, it's all about manipulation. It's all about how you want the hair to look and how you want it to sit and then basically moving it, manipulating it to get it to sit that way. And this is pretty much how I do my hair every time I wash it. It's once I straighten it and do the curls, I very rarely have to ever touch it up. Now I will have to like reapply product, you know, every day or two just to kind of give me the hold that I'm wanting. But typically it's not that difficult. Like my hair typically pretty much remembers how I've styled it and doesn't really move. The only part that I ever really have an issue with is right back here and on the sides because when I go to sleep, I guess I'm a rough sleeper because when I go to sleep, when I wake up in the morning, everything is just on the side sticking up. It's hilarious. It's comical. But I like to make sure that the back is smoothed down and not sticking up. And that's pretty much what I do. Now, there are some occasions that I want a little bit more texture on the ends of my hair. And I like to use a sea salt spray for that. So I have two here. This one is from KYN. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But I got this at Ulta. It is a texture spray and it almost... It's almost like a sea salt spray, but it's not as gritty. It's really, really nice. It's not super heavy. Like you can't feel it on your hair, if that makes any sense. And then I also have this one, which is from Not Your Mother's. And I like this one a lot, like a lot, a lot. It works really, really well. It is basically like a sea salt, it's sea salt spray, um, but it's not, like I said, it's not super gritty. It's more, you can feel this more on your hair than you can feel this. Um, but I will just basically spray it on the part that I'm wanting texture. But that's pretty much what I do. Now, if you are looking for a hack for not getting volumizing spray, this has worked for me and it's worked for a few of my other friends that have shorter hair. 
you can get a dry shampoo and use a dry shampoo. This one is not your mother's. Love this company if you can't tell because I have mentioned them a lot in this video. And I have several of their products and they're really, really good. Um, I really like their hairsprays. I really like, um, they have like deep conditioning packets. The only product from them that I do not recommend. Do not, if you are blonde, do not get their purple shampoo. Don't do it. Because I will have a toner on my hair when I'm blonde. And I can use like a Matrix Purple Shampoo or Eva NYC or even Clairol Shimmer Lights on my hair. And it doesn't pull the toner out. But then I put the Not Your Mother's shampoo, the purple shampoo on my hair, and it will pull my toner right out. Even though it says it's sulfate free and it's paraben free, it will pull it out. So if you want to save your toner, do not use it. <laughs> but this I love. It's not like Batiste. Batiste is very heavy and powdery and it's really hard to get it to blend and for you not to have like a white cast everywhere, but I have not had that problem with the Clean Freak dry shampoo. Now, I'm gonna make your day even better. They make it in colors. So the white can obviously work for blonde. They make it in light brown, medium brown, and dark brown. So if you have dark hair like me, this obviously isn't necessarily the perfect color for my hair color right now, but it's what I have. You can use this and it blends so much easier than a traditional white dry shampoo. Now, the only downfall to this is if you use too much in your hair and then you mess with your hair at some point during the day, it will get on your fingers. It will get under your nails. That's, it's just going to. But if you are looking to get a little bit more texture, a little bit more volume, you can use this. And in that case, what you're going to do is you're going to find the particular area that you're wanting more texture and more volume. So, for example, we'll do right here. You're going to spray and work it in. And I don't know, I can see it in my mirror, but I don't know that you guys can tell a big difference in the camera. But it honestly, and even like feeling it, I feel like this has more structure and a little bit more hold than it had before. It's not as like flimsy and soft as it was before. It has a little bit more grit and hold to it. It's amazing. I love it. I hope that this video was helpful. I know... I mean, even the other week, I was looking for ideas for different ways to style a pixie or how to style a pixie just for the heck of looking and seeing what was out there. So I hope that this helps somebody. I hope. If you have any tips or tricks or questions, please message me, comment, reach out to me in some way. Um, I'm going to, as always, I'm going to link my Instagram and my Facebook down below in the description box. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, please. Um, I try to upload once every week or two. Um, life has been crazy recently, so it's not been that frequent, but like and subscribe. And then I think there's a notification bell that you can get notified when I do upload. Um, and basically it'll pop up in your lock screen hey Kate does hair uploaded a video do it that way you never have to worry about hmm, I wonder if she put up a video it'll let you know when I put up a video you'll be in the know you will know what's going on so I will see you guys next time hopefully it won't be long but I will catch up with you guys later stay safe